The queen is dead. A security guard with a gun in his hands. The good times are over. Dark days ahead. I've just lost everything. <laughs> no, brother, please don't. <laughs> don't leave. Please, for the love of God, don't leave. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 286 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Uh, to all of our audio listeners and video watchers, you may notice the... the uh, relaxing sounds of a lawnmower and that is uh, because we film this show in a garage so you're very welcome um, I would also like to give a little update about Keelan's travels as you guys all know he was brutally and violently murdered uh, while he was away and he uh, I'm sorry to say uh, despite the absolutely life altering injuries that he sustained as Hello. well as the horrific deformities <laughs> that he will be given he did, unfortunately, survive the attacks yeah. and he has crawled his way back from America all the way back to this show. Welcome back to the show, Keelan. Thank you. Good, to, Glad to be here. No worries, mate. Please don't look at me. It's, <laughs> it's really tough to look at. He, oh. he's, uh, he is being disfigured. Um, oh. How long until you run out of images uh, of what you used to look like to post <laughs> on your Instagram? <laughs> Uh, not long. I've yeah. got about three weeks left. Yeah, can you hear him wheezing? <laughs> He's been damaged. Uh, we're also here here with Rosie. Hello. Not disfigured at all. Nope. <laughs> which which is less entertaining, but great great for her. Yeah. Um. So you were you're in America for I was a while. Robbed by a homeless man on Forty Second Street. Great. We'll get into that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Stabbed. See what a what a role reversal for you. <laughs> Normally it's the other way around. Uh, this is going to be Rosie's last episode for a while, as well as yeah. Keelan's, which we'll get into uh, in uh, in later on in the episode. It's bloody exciting news. Um, the the Queen is dead. All right, the Queen's died, and long live the King. When is that? When when do you reckon the monarchy is going to be fucking over? I think that this is the last one. This is the last King where people actually give a fuck about him, right? Because I think you know the Queen. I get it, okay? She was around for our, enti our entire life. She's been a part of our lives. You know, she's been queen for longer than I've been alive. Twice as long as, as I've been alive, right? And now she's dead. So I understand why people are like, oh, yeah, she's the queen because she's not even really a human. You know, she's like a figurehead or an idea, the queen. And now there's the king, right, her son, who's like 70, and he's been... Yeah, like the Queen's son for just as long, right? But I feel like after Charles goes, I mean, is there going to be an, a King William? Like, is anyone going to, like, be like... I feel like after Charles goes, people are going to be like, all right, this is a bit fucking ridiculous. Like, 10, 20 years from now when he dies, do we want a King William? I don't think so. And you know why? I think it's because we know that he's just a bloke. You know, Harry and William, because of paparazzi and now social media, they're just guys, you know? Like, I don't think you can have a king that also trended on Twitter once for getting pegged. You know, that's not a guy I'm going to bow my head to or, or, let, or let him knight me. <laughs> Is he going to knight me with a sword or his wife's strap on? <laughs> you know, I dub these uh, spears and I go, what's that smell? He goes, oops, sorry, forgot to wash it. <laughs> I don't think, uh, I don't know, do you reckon the monarchy stays around? I don't think so. Uh, I think it will. It's been around for like two thousand year, a thousand years already. Uh, true, but they've, but they've stayed around with the power of, of uh, enslaving poor people. They don't really have that anymore. They're just like there now. They're just, they're just kind of like big landlords, you know? I think they give people hope and that's what is going to stick them around. No, that's I, I agree, but I don't think William's going to give people hope because he can trend on Twitter for getting pegged. He's too much of a real, actual human. I feel like the queen, like she was the queen. She wasn't a person. She was the queen and you only ever saw her in official engagements you know, we've seen, we've literally seen Harry wearing a swastika at a party. It's true. 
true. Having Ma- fun with the boys. Maybe there will be a horrific assassination and that will make everyone care and be mm. passionate about it again. Oh, okay. Like a false flag operation. <laughs> yeah. England's yeah. 9-11. London down. Big Ben goes down. Yeah. Have you seen that movie London London Down or something? No, I think I've I've seen a I've seen a dating show <laughs> on, on the, on the oh. about like on the disabled people on dating. Yeah, I've seen, similar I've seen it's show Down syndrome in London. Similar show, but this one includes more blood. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and death. Oh, okay. What what happens in London Down? I think it, London has fallen is what it's called. It's just like this mm. big terrorist attack where terrorists destroy and take over the city. Yeah, um, and I was in London when I watched it. It was pretty scary. Right, I think I think that's um those those type of movies. What happens is is those are like um, plans that the CIA comes up with, and they go, nah, let's not do that one. And then they sell it as a movie script instead to make back the money they spent on like planning it. Well, in those you movies, know, like nine eleven could have been a movie, but instead we get to celebrate it every year. <laughs> In those movies, <laughs> <laughs> the military actually uh, f- helps fund it if they have a say at the end of it, at the end of the day. Right. You see actually, and that's not even a lie. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. In the film. So, like with Top Gun, the military gets a say at. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. The 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 only reason why Top Gun is allowed to use the actual jets and the United military, it's like a business. They can't use the brand without the military's approval Mm. is only if they make the military look good. Call of Duty is the same, right? The military works with the developers of Call of Duty because it's great propaganda. They're like, all right, we'll let you, you know, record our guns being shot and we'll let your video game characters wear our uniform, but only if Middle Eastern people are the bad guys because that's where we're going in five years, right? So whoever the bad guys are in the new Call of Duty film, uh, movie, game, game, (laughs) I have brain worms. Whoever the bad guys are in the next Call of Duty, that's where there's going to be a war next. You know, you go back five years, the bad guy was uh, Russia and you were playing as Ukraine. Look it up. (laughs) No, what, the most recent one, wasn't the most recent one actually the Russia was the bad guy? Yeah, we, Modern Warfare 2 is the one with the, the Russian mission, bad, no, bad Russian or no yeah. Russian. Yeah, no Russian. Yeah, yeah, but you were also in the Middle East. So <laughs> that was like what was about to happen where like, okay, Russia's the bad guy, but don't worry, we're still killing brown people. Mm-hmm. That's And that's, you know, that's the military, right? So sign up, Top Gun, you'll get a six-pack. Thousand dollar for signing bonus. Have you looked into it? <laughs> no. You're unemployed. All over, like I was staying in Wilmington, North Carolina. Everywhere you go, there's just like thousand dollar signing bonus if you sign up today to the military. Wow. Which is army, navy, man. You, or the other you one. You never. I think the only the only military shit I ever see in Australia is like every now and then I'll see an ad on TV, and it looks like a tourism ad. Yeah. Like, oh, you get to see the world. But at least here we get paid properly if we join the military or the army. You get like 75K year one. Really? Yeah. I, I have looked up. into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know shit's getting rough when Keelan's posting medical trials to his story again. <laughs> no, that's private. That's a private story. Oh, sorry. Is that, is that a secret? <laughs> no, no. It's... What, this what one medical is, trial are you looking into? Because every now and then Keelan will text me and go, dude, this one's for like $4,000 and I'll say not worth it. But the other day he put to his close friend story, 6200 6200 And the, even I thought, fucking sign me up. What do you have to do? Gluten study. I don't know. I have to book a call. Gluten study. But I think Can't I, be that bad. I might be Eat gluten intolerant. I might actually be gluten intolerant, so it might work out for me. Yeah. So they'll they'll inject you with a bunch of gluten. Yeah, that's what I keep hearing anyway. You know what it is? I bet it's I bet it's a fake study, right? Some old guy's going to show up and he's going to go, "We're doing a study on how gluten affects sexual performance," and he's going to eat bread and fuck you. <laughs> More than I'm getting at the moment. <laughs> really, you're not having much sex. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, I don't know. You know, I saw though the. I'll, I'll get into my clip about the Queen, but I saw uh, so fucking cool. I feel like just people's respect for royals 
over the last like five years especially has just plummeted especially because of this prince andrew shit where essentially you know he's almost absolutely definitely in minecraft had sex with a child theoretically as a joke right <laughs> and that's just hearsay right <laughs> but uh He's just not getting into any trouble. And even even the royals are like, all right, well, you're not allowed to have your official titles, but you can still enjoy all of the money, come to the parties and hang out with all of us. Mm. Nothing really happens. No no public statement like condemning the guy or anything like that. The queen is just like, yeah, sometimes your kids are going to fuck kids. What are you going to do? Right? So in uh, as they were transporting the queen's body, Right, which for some reason they do, mm. like as as some weird procession. They they what's weird about it is all right. Do that in England. Don't do it in a country that you've like subjugated. They're doing it in Scotland. It's like, hey, look at the bitch that fucking owns you guys. Look at that wave, peasants. <laughs> and some kid, right? Prince Andrew is walking past, walking behind her casket, and he yells out. You're a sick old man, Andrew, and starts talking about how he's yelling out, you know, he fucks kids and all this kind of stuff. And it was broadcast live on TV. I think the only thing that made it to TV was you're a sick old man, Andrew. Yeah. Uh, and then they, the BBC, you know, cut the mic because heaven forbid the public find out about <laughs> Prince Andrew having sex with children. The BBC <laughs> wouldn't want to report that. They might get in trouble, right? <laughs> but then he gets arrested for saying what is theoretically as a joke, according to some people in Minecraft as a video game, <laughs> the truth, even though that's fake, right? And he gets arrested for it. And we're supposed to be like, oh, good. You know, don't call the Queen's son a pedophile after he fucks a kid in Minecraft as a joke, theoretically. <laughs> that's not on. We need to respect the royals. It's like I don't know what is what is Queen what has Queen Elizabeth done for you other than being like a nice straw for Coke to go up into your nose on a Friday night? <laughs> like if you're an Australian, that's really all the Queen has done for you is is allowed you to do a line that costs too much money anyway. You know, that's kind of it. What what other notes is she just on the five? I don't know. I guess and and the, and the dollar and the two dollar. Yeah. Isn't she on the, the silver coins as well? Yeah. Yeah. But if you're doing lines with silver coins, you you've got bigger problems. All right. I would I would even say is 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 doing a line with a five dollar note is embarrassing. You know? Like treat that Coke with respect. It's expensive. All right. Use a fifty. Doing a line with a five is embarrassing. Mm. You know? That's like <laughs> If you snort a line with a $5 note, you didn't pay for the Coke and you're having too much of it. <laughs> Go home. No one wants you here. You're not that fun. Um, so obviously, right, the Queen dies and uh, I uh, I knew it was going to happen the, on this tour. I knew it was going to happen. I was posting about it, you know. In all of my, like, ads, if you have a look, I'm like, oh, the Queen's next. Come see me live. And thank fuck we had that Misfits show because she died at like two in the morning. Yeah. How's this for having having uh, rich friends, right? So my mate, okay, he texts me the news article of, oh, the queen is taking a turn for the worst. And he goes, man, I think she's dead. And I'm like, how do you know that? And he goes, my private chef. And I was like, all right, well, that's the most rich person thing I've ever heard. But then he elevated it and he was like, my private chef knows other private chefs who work in Buckingham Palace. (laughs) And they know that she is deceased right now. Start writing. So I knew at about 2 a.m. the day before I recorded the clip that she died. But I only wrote a couple of one-liners. And then in the morning I woke up really early and I just frantically wrote and that's what we came up with. And there were there were a couple of jokes that I cut out. Um, I cut out a couple. I can't remember what they were. They weren't very good. Um, but I was like the most stressful thing for me because it, that was the Misfits live show. It wasn't even my show. So I'm like, oh, man, 
these people aren't even stand-up comedy fans. They're like video game nerds. Are they even going to get around me at all? I'm opening the show. I'm hosting the show. But also, I had produced the live event, which meant I was in charge of everything from, you know, this basically the script of the show to also in charge of filming and audio recording the show. So I was in charge of like a 10-person video team on that day as well as every single performer as well as hosting the actual show uh and then i'm also producing the video that will be made of this entire event so i'm like trying to do all of this thing telling people where to film stuff all the misfits crew are great but they've never filmed a live show before so it was just like me telling everyone every single person what to do we got there at 2 p.m. and I had half written my jokes and then I spent about fucking three hours like setting up the event, making sure that the Misfits members were good and then the Misfits production team knew what they were doing and what they were filming uh, and then also making sure that we were getting the shots that we needed for, the, for my video that I was making of my perspective and their perspective and then the queen fucking died so i had to i knew that i had one shot at you know making the jokes and it didn't help that by the time by as soon as everyone saw me every single person was dude you got any jokes about the queen tonight like everyone wanted me to do it i don't think i've gotten so many dms in my life (sighs) other than when they announced the queen died uh (laughs) So it was a lot of pressure on me, but I got it. We got it, and uh, Rosie uh, Rosie filmed it. And what we did was, because we were filming the event anyway, uh, and I had this queen set, I knew that I had one shot. I literally went up on stage with notes. Because the Prince Philip stuff, a lot of people don't know, but I was doing almost all of those jokes that you see online. There were a couple of improvised ones because he died during the set, but I was doing those jokes for about three weeks before that like all those jokes so i knew them word for word whereas the queen one was like i wrote it the morning of i didn't get a chance to test them i thought they were good i couldn't really remember them and i went out and i did it and it was like so much pressure combined with all the other stuff but we got it and how we got it out so quickly was we told rosie we just filmed it on two camera angles and we just filmed the queen bit and then we just pulled the sd cards out of the camera replaced them with empty ones kept filming for the rest of the misfits show and then gave the cards with the queen set to keelan who then took it backstage and instead of watching and enjoy enjoying the show edited the queen clip uh and then was edit we were editing to like 1.30 maybe? 1.30, yeah. Yeah, 1.30, and then I uploaded it, I think, at 2 a.m. our time, which was like the afternoon, the day after the Queen died for UK. Uh, and then it blew up. It got like half a million on TikTok, and it's doing really well on YouTube and everywhere else as well. Other than Facebook, it's bombing on Facebook because old people are there. They hate me. Yeah. They're very upset. Um, no articles, though. No, new, no news articles. I think it might have something to do with me at the very end of the clip saying, fuck the Daily Mail. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'll take, I'll take insulting the journalist over getting them to do their fucking job. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that, that went well. And I think the, the actual event uh, of the, the Misfits show went awesome. So, basically, the show was the Misfits trying stand-up comedy for the first time ever. Uh, and... It was the concept of the show and the video that you will see sometime in October was basically comedians kind of take one comedian for each misfit. So I was looking after Fitz, Luke Kidgel was looking after Swagger Souls, Frenchie was looking after Mason, and Ruben Solo was looking after Toby. Um, and uh, man, they all did so well. It was their f- the first time they'd ever performed other than Fitz because I took him to a couple of open mics, which I talked about in a previous one. And I was so fucking impressed with all of them. Like, genuinely funny. And not just funny for, like, their fans either. They were telling actual, actual real jokes. So, you know, all things considered, it actually went fucking great. And interesting behind-the-scenes note about the Queen clip is uh, I actually forgot to do, I think, three of the jokes that I had written down. Mm. um, Because I wrote them all down. And then I was in the car park of the comics lounge running over them in my head. And then I did the set 
right? Uh, in the first 10 minutes of the show, which is just fucking risky, right? Because they're not my fans and they're not really stand-up fans either, but I'm going out there and starting a show with brand new material that's edgy as fuck about the Queen dying. You guys hear that noise? How good's that? That's really good stuff. That's this. You know what, you know what this sounds like? Spearhead Sundays. <laughs> this sounds like my podcast. I, you know, I um, I had a job interview yesterday, and they're like, "Yeah, sorry, man, we we record out of a garage. I hope that's not too bad for you." And I was like, "No, don't worry. I'm used to it. I've worked in one for four years." Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I really feel like um, Rosie's like the second child. <laughs> you know, like sometimes when when parents are new parents, they kind of fuck the first one up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then and then they and then the second kid comes around. They're like, all right, we know what we're doing now. <laughs> you're the you're the first child, and I was like, oh, it's totally fine to have an employee in a warehouse that floods <laughs> and has no internet and also gets f- up to forty degrees in summer and twelve degrees in the winter. That's fine. It was fun, and I miss it. Yeah, yeah, bring 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 me back. Uh, but with Rosie, my second child, I was like, you know what? Maybe she deserves running water and a bathroom. Uh-huh, Keelan. <laughs> yeah, Keelan's like, oh, fuck, a toilet that, that works. What do you want that for? <laughs> we had to bring in our own toilet paper. Yeah, I remember that. We had to, we had to bring in oh, our own actually. toilet paper. Yeah. Well, I provided the toilet paper. I didn't make Keelan bring his in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But but if Lewis run out, that it was a big problem for me. Yeah, it was communal warehouse toilets. Like put it this way, there was uh, there were toilets. There was only one toilet and it had a man sign on it. There were no women's. It was just communal, yeah. right? <gasps> so there was like a, a urinal in the bathroom that you would use, and one or two out of three toilets would always be clogged with shit. Oh no, I don't know so if I could shit. do that. And and see and and she's bloody ungrateful. She wants running water and and a bathroom and a safe working environment. Safe. Yeah. Okay. You know. See what I expect from all of my employees is a, a love of risk taking <laughs> and a disregard for personal safety. Yeah. One night, Rosie, we're packing up all the gear to go on to like a show. We're walking all the gear to my car, which is like down the street. <laughs> Do you remember this? We're walking with all the gear and a guy on a bike pulls up right in front of, front of us and there were like drug dealers next door. Mm. So we thought we were about to get robbed. Yeah. Oh, it was like one guy behind us and one guy in front of us and we both just kind of freaked out, not sure what to do. I was, I, I was, I remember that. I was like, oh, we're getting robbed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I was literally just doing the math in my head of like, I've just lost everything. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and there's, oh, and then I remember like, what a stupid thought. Oh, thank God. It's only a drug deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we walked in. You would have loved this. We, I came into work one day and the, apart, the, what is it? The warehouse next to us was getting stormed by the police. So. Oh, I remember that. The raid. Yeah. yeah. Some guy was dealing like hard drugs. Through there, and he got it raided by the police. Amazing! Oh, I missed right. that. that. Yeah, it feels like a movie remembering it. Yeah, and then and then after that, uh, a warehouse around the corner, a, a headless dead body was found in it. Have I told you that? Yeah, you have. Yeah, that is like too scary. Yeah, I think I would quit honestly. <laughs> <laughs> See, bloody ungrateful. Doesn't want drug dealing and murder in her working environment. Nope. It's pretty fun though. Um. It was a bit of a laugh. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So we got. So I, yeah, I, I actually forgot some of the jokes uh, during. So in the video, the second joke I tell, I actually, at the very end of the show, the Misfit show, I actually was like, fuck, I forgot some jokes. So we ended the show and then I walked out on stage in front of the audience and I was like, hey, I forgot some Queen jokes. I'm going to do a couple. And then I did like three jokes. They went down well. And then we put them back into the video. Mm. So that little three minute clip, half of it is like from an hour in the future. And then we snap back in time <laughs> to other jokes that I actually did remember. But all uh, through the power of editing, you couldn't, you couldn't notice. There's also another, I, I really fucked up because I wrote them that morning. 
there's one massive glaring error in the clip that no one noticed. Even me and Keelan didn't notice while we were editing it. Uh, I called the Queen Prince Philip's husband. I said, she's been an excellent husband. It's meant to be wife. She's his wife. But I accidentally said husband because I was thinking that he was her husband. I think I was supposed to say excellent wife of her husband, Prince Philip. Uh, I noticed that. And I, well, I noticed it all night, but I thought I was just missing something. And then I yeah. mentioned it the last, our final watch. Yes. And it was at, almost at catastrophic for you. And eight people watched it and no one said anything. Yeah. And then and then I was like, oh, fuck, we should take it out. And then I was like, oh, well, actually, if no one noticed it, maybe we leave it in. And uh, I think that goes to show if you say anything with enough confidence, people will assume that you're correct. Like I was, I'm so good at performing that everyone was just like, oh, she has a penis. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was like accidentally interpreted as a, a multi-layered joke. Like me saying, oh yeah, Prince Philip was her bitch and she wears the pants in the relationship. Mm. No, no, no. I just fucked up the wording. But you know, that happens so often where people will be like, oh man, that was such an intelligent joke. And then I'll go and read what I, I'll go and watch what, they're saying I said, and I go, oh, that's actually not what I meant at all, but I'll take credit for it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so, yeah, that went out. I'm glad I got that. I uh, I think with uh, – I'm hoping that Prince Andrew is next, but if he ever gets arrested, I'm going to have to start writing suicide jokes. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, guys, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped.com, Okay. If there's one if there's one thing Prince Andrew hates, it's pubes. All right? Manscaped.com, use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. The Lawnmower 4.0, the best ball bag trimmer in the game. I used mine last night. No, you can't see, Keelan. <laughs> but yes, it does look immaculate, all right? And 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 uh, and that's all you're going to get is a vivid description, all right? Here's what it looks like. No, guys, get yourself a personal groomer. Keelan, you've got one. Yes. Yeah. Well, actually, I lost mine, so what? I'm, I'm all disheveled. Have I got the code for you? <laughs> Tell me. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping the Lawnmower 4.0. What do I get? Mate, You what don't you get? You get you could get some ball deodorant. Mm. You're always telling me about how, how much your, your nuts stink. <laughs> In fact, Rosie's wearing a peg on her nuts. <laughs> and since the accident, it's gotten worse. Oh. Right? You think he's you think he's mutilated on his face. You should see the nether regions, all right? Mm. They did him dirty. Oh. Uh, there's you can also get a, a personal grooming kit, not that you have fingernails after they're forcibly removed. But <laughs> if you use code SPEARS, you can get twenty percent off and free shipping, whatever you would like, uh, from the website. Um, and it would help support me because, uh, guys, I've got some great news. <laughs> oh. uh, so this is going to be Rosie's last episode for a while, uh, and that's because I have uh, I've I've gone completely broke. This is not a joke. Uh, Rosie has very unfortunately been made redundant because I have run out of money uh, to support anyone, uh, including almost myself. Uh, these surgeries have uh, completely annihilated me monetarily, completely fucked all of my income and were incredibly expensive to do. I thought it would be less damaging to my income and everything and, and the money that I was making. Uh, I was wrong. Uh, the braces were so much money. The surgeries were so much money. And then it was also taking time off. So it was like a long period of not making money as well as the after effects of COVID uh, and me not touring because I had to do surgeries. Uh, So uh, not a joke, very sad, and it fucking sucks, but I have made everybody redundant. Uh, So this is Rosie's last week, um, and uh, I just want to say on the show you've made an excellent contribution to everything that I've been, been doing and trying to do, and you're an incredible content lead and I'm going to be very very sad to see you go and I'm really sorry um, this is her the first time she's found out about this by the way <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> no she had notice she's had a lot of notice um, and uh, yeah I'm going to I'm going to miss you yeah. I'm going to miss your presence on the show and I know that everyone listening will as well 
Um, and I think that wherever you move on to, you'll do a phenomenal job for them. And, uh, and it, yeah, it sucks. Um, but, uh, would you like to say anything to the people listening? Um, thank you guys so much for having me and being like really nice to me in the Patreon, uh, and also at shows as well. That's been really nice. Like people coming up and saying hello to me. Um, and yeah, I've had a good time being part of the community and being on the podcast. So yeah. Uh, thank you so much. And also I see all of your comments as well. Yes. Even the bad ones. Especially the bad ones. <laughs> Especially the bad ones. <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys so much for the support. Um, I really appreciate it and I'll be sad to be leaving. Yeah. Um, so, well done, Rosie. Well done. Well done. Well said. Um, and, yeah, if anyone's hiring for a social media manager or anything like that, content lead, a freelancer for filming stuff, Rosie is uh, great. And I recommend her. Um, I, uh, yeah, I'm so fucking broke. I'm fucked, basically. Um, enough about you. Let's get back to me, right? <laughs> I'm fucked. I've been ruined, okay? Uh, I think I'll be all right. I'm, uh, I, I think I'll be all right. I hope I'll be all right. I have no money. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think that basically um, just the surgeries, like, were, were way worse in terms of how much they were. You know, I got insurance and it turns out the insurance didn't cover as much as what we thought they were going to cover. They told us we were fully covered. And I suppose it's like, uh, must be our fault, of course. An insurance company could never be wrong. They're intrinsically good um, and you should trust them. Uh, we probably should have clarified more, but we thought fully covered meant fully covered. What that actually means is they'll pay for a certain percentage of what Medicare says the surgery is worth. Uh, which is basically less than what we paid them in insurance. Uh, but I guess that's their whole fucking business model, isn't it? Uh, is uh, is tricking people and not paying out. Um, so that sucked. And then uh, obviously, uh, yeah, it was really fucking expensive to run a business with multiple employees. And when you're not touring and when you have to take so much time off from making videos that the views kind of dip, and then when you do come back, you got metal in your mouth, so you're lisping so much that Americans will comment, I'm really sorry, I love you, man, but I can't understand you anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, the money stops coming in. And uh, I've had to make everyone redundant, uh, which which sucks, because I was kind of planning on when Keelan comes back, like, yeah, man, when you come back, things will be going great. You can have a, a job too. Mm. Uh, sorry, mate. Any final words for you? Keelan's going to be taken out back and <laughs> after this. Uh Oh, I didn't know I was going to say anything. Uh, no. How about this? How about this? I'll come up with some words for you. Yeah. Uh, Lewis, would you like some money? <laughs> well, I would love to offer you some, but yeah. I'm also in debt. Why? You got no job? I uh, got, no, got no job. Yeah. I was, I was made redundant a few months ago, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. I took a really expensive mm. holiday mm -hmm. and... Uh, you and I are in the same boat now. Yeah, great. Want well, to start a podcast? Well, guys, uh, I would, I would, if anyone would like the world's riskiest job, I've heard that oil rigs are quite risky, <laughs> but even riskier than that is working for me. But it is very fun and fulfilling. Yes. If that makes a difference. Yeah. Um, not to your landlord. <laughs> Can't pay rent and fun and fulfillment, can you? Or to my credit uh, card. Just ask my bank and the, the people that have my mortgage. Um, yeah, I don't know. And the ATO. The, just ask the ATO. <laughs> don't say that in this show. He who shall not be named. Um, <laughs> yeah, look, I don't know. I'll be okay. I think I think I just need to... Uh, it's, you know, it's just going to be broke vibes for a little bit. And I've always been honest on this show. You know, I was, I was honest when I was... It's so... This entertainment is so fucking weird where you can... You know, go from literally literally making more money than you ever made in your enti entire life, like eight months ago, that was me, to being like the most broke you've ever been for like five, six years, which is me right now. Um, so it'll it'll come back. I think that you know, just employing a bunch of people uh, in the aftermath of COVID, uh, combined with mainly the surgeries. Uh, and how, how expensive they were, but also how much money they took away from me in not being able to work and tour. 
So, yeah, I think that the the podcast will probably be just me for a while and all of the videos that you see will be edited by just me and shot by just me. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I think uh, I will just um, say, oh, you know what, I'll say this. For the love of God, support me on Patreon. Please, dear God. Remember when, when, uh, when for a while it felt like, oh, Lewis probably doesn't need my help on Patreon? He seems to be doing really well. <laughs> Guys... The good times are over. Dark days ahead. Support me on Patreon. Dear God. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Jazz might get Jazz is gonna get a job. <laughs> <laughs> yes! It's awesome. Look. If anything else, I have I have a semi positive attitude. And I've always I've always been honest with you guys. So I'll let you guys know. How about this? Every episode of Spearhead Sundays. I'll read out how much money is in my bank account, <laughs> and you guys can you guys can let me know uh, how I'm doing. Um, for example, yesterday uh, at the coffee shop, uh, I got a cappuccino, and my card declined. Um, here we go, seventy seven cents in uh, in my Access Advantage card account. So if you would like to 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 top, give me twenty seven cents, I'd have a dollar. Uh, and then I'm and then I'm only four dollars away from a coffee, so um, <laughs> uh, if you guys uh, would like to buy merch or buy a ticket, that would be greatly appreciated. I'll be okay. I have uh, money coming in. It's uh, just mainly I can't sustain employees and stuff like that. And you know I've been broke before. I know how it works, and I'll get back up there. It's just tough times here in the Spears household. Uh, you know surgeries, fostering a kid, running a business after COVID. Shit sucks, man, um, but I'll be all right. And uh, I will keep doing this show. I'm going to do my best to not do this show. That's the only thing that I am worried about. My real fear is not losing the house. It's it's ending this hot streak that we've been on with the podcast purely because of Rosie. So, um, yeah, maybe you can just, uh, you know what? If you guys give me, if you give me a dollar... I'll forward that dollar on to Rosie. Not to do the podcast, just to text me every Sunday and go, on, have you done it yet? And that's all she has to do. Please do that. Please, please do that. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I don't know. It'll be okay, I hope. Keelan, welcome back. Thank you. Not to employment, to here. Well, I, mi- I missed it. Yeah. I missed it. A few weeks, every so often I would tune in, but other, we- other weeks I wouldn't. the last episode you did where um, – where you made oh, yeah. fun of me and I said stop and I had no authority over yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just my mate. Yes. Rosie, welcome to our great friendship. Oh, Yay. yes. Congratulations. Yeah, all three of us are just friends, just hanging out, kicking back, having fun for no reason other than companionship. Welcome. How good is How nice Not even this? colleagues. Do you feel different? <laughs> no. No? <laughs> no. Yeah, Rosie's stressing as well. Rosie's all... <laughs> yeah. Um... While I was away, I did listen to the podcast because I missed it too much. It made me sad that I couldn't be here. Right. So how good to come back and it doesn't exist anymore. It well, does, my, I didn't say I'm Sorry, in sorry. Show. My position. Yeah. My unpaid position on this show. Well, mate, how, how would you like a job as a slave? Oh. Yeah, I'll keep doing the podcast if there's a spot for me. Unpaid. Yeah, I might have to sell the chair, but you can stand. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, the podcast won't stop, but it may may very well be erratic. Um, so you were in America. You had mm-hmm. some some tales for us. Yeah, um, I've told you a few. If you want me to, to recite any good ones, oh, there was one one particularly funny one. How about you just read off a few sentences um, of the titles of each story, and we'll pick one for for today's episode, and maybe we'll save one for the Patreon episode. We'll save the best one for the Patreon episode. Black. Because as we all know, <laughs> the Patreon uh, version of the podcast is so fucking good, Patreon. Uh, okay. Uh, woman kidnapped in Atlanta. Maybe we can tell that one on Patreon. On Patreon? Yeah. What's that? I've told you that. I told you that one before. No, what's Patreon? Where, oh, where people can donate to you. Yeah, yeah. But $15 th- but a month minimum. It's not just minimum. about donating. Surely they get some amazing benefits as well. Ah. Oh. I'm sorry, I'm not trained on this one, Rosie. What? Well, she doesn't bloody work here anymore. Pa- Patreon is where you can give you can give Lewis money. Yeah, look at it. Listen to her trying to save her job. 
so that he can hire me <laughs> and give me a raise. It as well. sucks, bro. Yeah, guys. And you also get exclusive content. Man, you get so you get so much exclusive content and the satisfaction that that Rosie can afford breakfast, um, and me for that matter. You get exclusive content if I am employed. No, look, I will also <laughs> keep up the... But don't fucking... Don't sabotage. Don't burn the house down on your way out. Um, no, look, I'll do my best to keep it up. Uh, I I have a good one. Um, I t- I, I've told you before, so it's yeah. going to be difficult to tell you again, but I had a bus... Oh, I've heard this one. ...out of Skid Row. Yeah, this one is like... Have you heard this? Oh, you so haven't heard fun. this. Oh, okay. So my first day I went to Honolulu and then anyway, one, one of the first days I was then in LA, but I was with all my bags um, of cocaine, of course, no bags of luggage. I had a big duffel bag and then a backpack with my laptop and everything in my life that's valuable to me. Mm-hmm. And then a little um, satchel thing with my documents. <clears throat> And I was in LA for like eight hours, but with way too much stuff. Like Billy Darcy and a few other Australians were around, but I just had too much stuff that me going anywhere was just going to be inconvenient. Yeah. So at midnight, my bus took off from Skid Row, which if anyone doesn't know, is Tent City. It's It's where homeless people live. It's a really dangerous area. It's a refugee camp. It's probably like the saddest thing I've ever seen in real life. Yeah, and seeing it online, it doesn't doesn't compare to seeing it in like in reality of like, oh my god, there's actually like a giant. It's a refugee camp, but mm. these people aren't running from a war zone or you know a natural disaster. They're run, they're just poor in America, you know, in like a first world country. It's crazy to see. Yeah, and so I had I got off the plane and I took a bus to. Uh, Central Station, and I was taking a flex bus, mm. which um, which sounded like a great idea when I booked it. Yeah, it sounds like a place you get on, and, and the bus driver was like, "Hey, check this out." <laughs> and you're like, "What's that?" And you go, oh, "It's a Rolex. Cost me twenty grand. I've got three. You're like, fuck, that's a flex." And so I had, <clears throat> sorry, I had eight hours between arriving at Central Station and getting on the bus. So I was like, "Well, I'm jet lagged. I will just sleep at the bus station." I've walked into the bus Real station homeless activity. and been asked to leave pretty much immediately. I was like, oh, I'll have a bus in eight hours. Surely you can let me stay. There's yeah. a two hour minimum there, mm. a maximum rather. Um, and after a, a bit of debate with the security guard, because I had a flex bus, the poor person bus, yeah. I wasn't even allowed in the building. <laughs> You're only allowed in the building if you have a Greyhound ticket. There's a two hour maximum, mate. Oh, but I've got this ticket. Oh, actually, <laughs> fuck off. Yeah. Get out of here. And I was just like, well, obviously you can tell that I'm traveling. I have nowhere else to go. What am I supposed to do? Mm. And they were like, well, sure, you can stay, but there is a $1,200 fine if you're caught loitering. What does that mean? If you're just caught. No, but like you can stay, but if you get caught staying, you'll get fined. That's not. Well, that's what I thought. I thought that was pretty rude. And there's signs. I think I was texting you at the time. There's signs everywhere saying, if you're caught loitering, it's a $1,200 fine. Mm. Anyway. That's all good. I ended up sleeping there and it was a really stressful sleep because mm. I was holding on to all my stuff and also terrified I was going to get a $1,200 fine. Yeah. Eventually I, I make my way out to walk down to the bus station, which it was like 800 metres away. So that's like a five-minute walk mm. or maybe a bit more. And as I'm walking in pitch black, all my things that belong to me, this woman come – oh, no, sorry. Actually, this is important. I see a man, blood covered on his face. His face covered in blood bandage on his eye, him holding it, the bandage to his eye. Yeah, I saw shit like that in Skid Row too. I remember we were dro- we were just driving through Skid Row. Yeah. And a guy saw that we had cameras and just started to storm the vehicle. Oh, <laughs> really? drive away. Yeah. Yeah. And like, hey, if you're going to be filming in this area, you got to pay. And I tried to get into the car. We were like, oh drive, Jesus. drive, drive. <laughs> and uh, I've looked at him not because I'm shocked. I was just like, oh, that's what's happening here. Mm. And this woman comes out of the shadows and starts going, leave, what are you doing? Get out of here. Who are you? Leave. And I was I was like, whoa, whoa, what, what have I done? And she's like, you, you're obviously not from around here. You look like a tourist. You need to get out. Where are you going? And I was like, oh, I'm trying to take the bus. And she's like, the bus is over here. Get the fuck out as quickly as possible. And wow. she like 
she, like she kind of walked with me to the bus. What a nice lady. And then she was like, yeah, never come back. What are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> And I said, of course, I was like, oh, thank you so much. I didn't realise this is such a bad spot. I booked it online. Mm. Um, yeah, because you don't realise Skid Row is like, it's not, it's unfathomable until you see it in real life. It's not like a a corner or a street. It's like a suburb yeah. of homeless encampments. And I'm an idiot. Uh, a lot of my stories, I won't tell all of them, but a lot of them reflect. A lot of them are just like, if, if. If I didn't know you, I would just assume you were suicidal. <laughs> well, and you're doing I was, it on purpose. I was going to say, a lot of them reflect on the fact that I'm a pretty big white guy who grew yes. up in Melbourne. Yeah. Not much to worry about. Mm. So I'm here 40 minutes before my bus takes off. Yeah, that's classic. Like, there's there's straight white male privilege, and then there's big straight white male privilege, yeah. which is on another level. And it's I had- not only... Do I, am I not going to experience all of the hardship that all these other communities have? I'm also never going to get hit because I look like I would fuck you up. Yeah. And so that's just like, yeah, what do you mean don't go into the refugee camp <laughs> with my with my laptop? And and so I rock up to this bus stop. I've got stop. a bus to catch. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I rock up to this bus stop. It's one of those like long distance buses. So there is like a process of actually getting on. You don't just like tap on. Yeah. Um, I was going to San Francisco and I'm there 40 minutes early. So there's a bunch of people there and I'm like, Oh, I'm good. I'm safe. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy as Larry. And then everyone gets on the bus. I'm not allowed on the bus. Obviously it's not my bus. And I'm left by myself in just a parking lot in the middle of Skid Row. With all your shit. All my belongings. The most robbable man in the country. <laughs> Cause I wouldn't fight. I'd say, Yes, would you like, what else would you like? Yeah, and would the you like police my- won't help because you'll show up and you'll be like, oh, I got robbed in Skid Row. They're like, oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good luck. Um, and while I'm standing there by myself, oh, I was pretty scared. I don't think I've ever been scared before. Yeah. Uh, I was pretty fucking terrified. There's gunshots going off and there's like hoons driving around. Mm. It was like something out of Grand Theft Auto. Anyway, got there in the end. I was all safe. All good. But then... In San Francisco, that's even worse, arguably way worse. Skid Row, every street. As streets are nice in the daytime. Mm. As soon as it's nighttime, it's tent city. Man, that country seems like it's gotten way worse since I was there. in Because I was there in 2019. Yeah. It seems like it's gotten way worse. And I, I, must, I was staying in a bad area in Can't San Francisco, but I didn't realize because what I looked up online, it was like, yeah, it's pretty safe. But my, I met up with one of my friends who lives there and he dropped me off and he's like, dude, what are you, why are you staying here? I was mm. like, but it said it was a nice place online. This is the thing. Every fucking, every time I look at, I think about, oh, I would like to go to America and I look up like, you know, I've looked up like, oh, where should you live in New York if you've never been there before and you don't want to spend too much money and like what's a good place for young people to live, like first time New, New York resident. And you look up suburb you find is this safe Mm. and i couldn't find a single suburb that didn't have yeah it's safe as long as you don't do this yeah you know like in in, if you look up in australia is this suburb safe you will get a yes or a no Mm. every single place in like a major u.s city was like this area is safe as long as you don't do this yes and it's like conditional safety in that country it one of the where I was staying in New York, I was staying on 106th Street, which is like yeah. pretty far up, mm. uh, right next to Central Park. And I looked it up. I was like, is 106th Street safe? And it was like, yes, it's safe as long as you don't walk between 95th and 98th Street because that's where the housing commission is. And then actually it is like... that's a But that's a giant portion of <laughs> yeah. that area. So that's not a safe area. That's but, like, yeah, you know... Walking that block is, well, those few blocks is actually fucking terrifying at night time. But then the rest of it was really safe and fine. Yeah, fuck. Um, but this, anyway, the San Francisco thing, this is what really cemented me uh, realizing how unsafe America is now. Mm. Um, it was like 10 p.m. one night and I was like pretty tired. So I'd slept and slept from like 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Yeah. I'd woken up in my hostel and some guy in there i was like hey man i'm just gonna go down the street to taco bell do you want me to get you anything and he's a uh, san francisco tour guide he's from romania yeah and he was like no brother please don't (laughs) don't leave please for the love of god don't leave (laughs) 
<laughs> and I, uh, because everyone that gives that reputation of Frankston yeah. and Frankston's like really safe if you're tall, yeah. white and male. Yeah. I've never had an issue. So I was like, I'll be right, mate. And then I left. I get like 10 minutes, five minutes down the street. And I'm like texting Phoebe. I've sent her my location. I was like, if I don't respond, call the, <laughs> call the police. <laughs> what, but why didn't you see that and turn around and go home? I was hungry. <laughs> Uber Eats but, isn't a thing? Yeah, it was. But I've said this to you before. Yeah. There's something in my brain that doesn't let me stop. Mm. I have to keep going. Yeah. Oh, I'm, uh, I am I. should be okay is oh, how my brain works. In a, in, a, in a sexual assault case. <laughs> but you're on There's something in my... Yeah, anyway. Mm. What was that? What were you going to say, Rosie? What did you see that was, like, so unsafe? Oh, it's... It's just, like, dangerous and there's homeless people and there's... You have to see it. You it's can't just, explain it's just it. dangerous. It's like it's that just video like I a, showed you earlier. An overwhelming feeling of I'm <coughs> not safe. When I was in downtown LA, middle of the CBD, like Melbourne CBD but bigger... Right, Melbourne CBD at night time, it's like almost lovely. As mm. long as it's not like late Friday, Saturday night, it's almost lovely. It's like, oh, this is nice, it's well lit, there's people everywhere having just getting home or going to see their friends. This is really nice. Downtown LA was like, oh, I almost stepped in human shit. Yeah. Oh, those guys are fighting. I think that homeless guy's been stabbed. This woman is off her head on drugs. And I feel like I'm going to get punched and people keep looking at me. Mm. It's like scary. Uh, and and I walked into this Taco Bell slash KFC joint mm. and there was a man with two pit bulls <laughs> with chains around their necks, like a typical. Yeah. And then there was Video a, game NPC. a security Southwest. guard with a gun in his hands. In his hands? <laughs> in his hands. <laughs> Just fiddling with it, I, looking down the back. <laughs> just waiting. <laughs> Fuck. Ready. I yeah, was, if the Taco Bell needs an armed guard who can't even keep it in a holster, that's yeah. you, brother, please. <laughs> no. I was fucking security terrified. Security kill streak. And then the next morning, uh, it was only a few days after 4th of July, so that's it makes sense. Someone set off fireworks right outside our window. And I've immediately woken up thinking it's fireworks. This is at like 5 a.m. That's what I woke up to. And I was just like, fuck this, I'm out. And I booked my ticket and I left. I went to North Carolina that day. That's. I needed, I should have stayed in a nicer area. I think it was like a bit much for the first like yeah, three days. You have to talk to a local. You have to look it up online and then talk to three people who live there and go, is this. Safe? Yeah. And my mate who lives there, but he, he lives across, across the river. He lives in. Um, in the college town, Berkeley. And I should have stayed with him. I don't know why I didn't. Uh, but, well, I think I just wanted to stay in the heart of San Francisco. Mm. So next time I go, I know what to expect or I know to book somewhere nicer. Yeah. I have a lot of just fucking crazy stories like that. You need to, like, from if, if when I do New York again, I'm going to stay where people live. Like, I stayed in the – I stayed, like – around the corner from Times Square because I was just like, oh, I want to be in the middle of it and I yeah. know that's close to comedy clubs. I, and that yeah. actually was safe, but it was very expensive and it was just super touristy and gross. I would much rather next time go somewhere where people live, like yeah. right next door to a really dangerous housing commission. Or- well, that actually where I where I was is where the where people live. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so maybe that's a horrible idea. Yeah. But, no, no, the Housing Commission... Hey, man, that's racist. The, the housing com- I didn't say anything about race. I say Housing Commission, you think black people. That, that's racist. You're putting words in my mouth. Um, the, the Housing Commission isn't too bad during the day. It's only if you're walking by yourself and you're a vulnerable person. I felt fine. Yeah. Oh, And then this is the other thing. I was on the phone to you one night... And it's oh yeah, pr- this was scared me, <laughs> and I was I was across the other side of the planet, <laughs> pretty late at night. I'm just walking around like I was on um, whatever it doesn't matter where I was, and I just see this woman from across the road getting robbed, <laughs> and she's screaming. We're wrapping up our conversation, and I had a lovely chat. And Keelan's like, "All right, man, I should probably go." 
I was like, all right, cool, have a good night. He goes, oh, actually, can you? No, this is a different story. Oh, okay. Well, that that story ends with, can you please stay on the phone with me for five (laughs) minutes? And I stayed on the phone with him for 15 (laughs) until he got home. That was a different story of where you were fearing for your life, Mm -hmm. walking around like a fuckhead by yourself at night. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, really. This is a different story. Well, that... I think this was the first time we caught up when I was like in New York, and is this the one where you joined in and started beating that woman up? Yeah, and I I took her belongings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, there was a, a woman. I heard a scream, and from across the street, there's a woman getting robbed, and a man and a woman are fighting for this bag. Fuck. And then, of course, I was not going to participate, and I went inside, and I was a scared little boy. Mm, didn't help her. <laughs> yeah, of yeah. course. Anyway, that's uh, that's my story. I can tell more on the Patreon part if. If you want, yeah, all right. We'll do we'll do more on the Patreon podcast that will come out in thirty years because I'm in charge of it. Now. <laughs> uh, no, Rose is in charge of this episode, so that's her problem to make come out. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think we will we will end it there because we've come to the end of the episode. Um, yeah, I just want to say again, thank you very much, Rosie, for being part of this show and making it so good. And I hope that at some point, if I can turn things around, you'll come back. Uh, but if not, I know that you'll go on to do great things, uh, and we appreciate it. Uh, and uh, with that, for the love of God, support me on Patreon, please. Uh, I'm Lewis Spears, and I'll talk to you next Sunday. It's Broke Vibes, baby. I guess who got more relatable? <laughs> 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 I'll talk to you next Sunday. Have a shit one. Bye. Bye.